mean not fuck you, but you no, probably never Because yeah. what they do with chocolate is that you use fish with it, they use red meat. What, kind of, what fish is red meat? So now he's going to taste for something new. But you were in that cage, so now he's going to assume that you taste like that, because that's what he's thinking. So that's, that's what surfers, the big thing that surfers have is that you're teaching it to like red meat. Mm -hmm. white meat. That's the thing. They, generally they use horse meat. And what they do is they put it on the bodyboard behind the boat. Now I'm lying on my bodyboard in the ocean. And it checks the bodyboard all the time, every time they jump. And it's red meat. That's the difference. I like to think that knowledge is going to increase and understanding is going to increase, but the more things change, the more they stay the same. And already since I've been here, I've interviewed members of the surfing community who are still convinced in the words of a guy yesterday that you guys are going out there with huge pieces of red meat on a hook on top of a bodyboard to attract the sharks. Why is the information so limited or, or why is the understanding of what you guys do so misconstrued? Well, you know, they always say information is power and the ability to make a decision you know, is, is made that much better by having a good information base. And I find it almost impossible that in today's day and age, with the countless documentaries that have been done, numerous research papers, and many different uh, public speaking opportunities that myself, other cage divers and researchers have, have, have given, that that mentality still prevails. And I, I hate to say it, it's based 100% on ignorance. You know, there's, uh, there's no cage diving operation in South Africa, not just my own, but I can say for the whole industry that's taking out bodyboards, taking out slabs of meat. I mean, the people in the public that think we take out live cows to see, I mean, it's the most ridiculous th situation. There's obviously a, a lot of contention about whether chumming causes shark attacks or not. I personally believe it's got nothing to do with shark attacks whatsoever. Uh, fishermen have been chumming far more than any shark cage dive operator for many years and it's never caused shark attacks. There are always going to be shark attacks whether you have shark cage diving boats or you don't. We personally haven't chummed for the last three or four years. We don't need to here. Um, <clears throat> the sharks are here naturally. There's a colony of 60,000 seals behind me. So that sort of tracks animals to us. We put a bait in the water which we don't purposefully feed to the sharks just to get the sharks up to the boat. I went out on a little fishing boat in False Bay. Not because I'm a fisherman, but because I couldn't afford the actual shark boats. Anyway, we were cleaning fish all the way back into the harbor. They were continuing to clean fish in the harbor, and that was just a little artisan fishing boat. Imagine the big fishing boats dumping all kinds of fish waste overboard. And if you think about it, what is the difference between what we do when we're putting a bait in the water to what a fisherman does when he puts a bait in the water, hooks a shark at the bottom, and then loses the shark? The shark doesn't say, oh, hang on, it's a fishing boat and not a shark cage dying boat. It makes no difference. There, they lose many, many of their catch to great white sharks. And that is done very close to shore. There are no restrictions on them. It's just like a spear fisherman. If ever there's going to be an association, a spear fisherman shooting a fish and having the fish taken off his line, that's about as clo close an association as you can get. We're at the harbor at Cock Bay and we just witnessed uh, fishermen bringing in sharks, of course, beheaded and gutted. They're catching these sharks, cleaning them, gutting them. They arrived at the shore already cleaned. What's interesting about seeing the sharks coming in already cleaned and gutted is that, of course, you're leaving a chum slick, so to speak, on the way in. Um, you know, in the, in the case of the operators at Seal Island, research that was done in the past shows that there was a negative association by virtue of the fact that the operators there made such a strong point of making sure they didn't feed the sharks. When you pull a, a piece of bait away from a shark over and over again, I liken it to going to a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and as you're about to eat, the waiter pulls the hamburger away. The first time you think, okay, well what the hell. Second, third, fourth, fifth time, you think, geez, this is a pretty lousy restaurant. I, want, I don't want to go here. Why a shark would then, you know, come back to that boat? There's no real reason for it. And that's what the, the research was showing. That if the operators obey the laws and they're not feeding the sharks on a regular basis, the sharks actually start disassociating themselves with the boat because they go out there, there's no feed reward. They go out there, there's no feed reward. And this was clearly shown, and in the case of Khansbai and Mossel Bay, 
the association was shown to be little of no significant value as well. But even, let's say even if the sharks did associate with a shark cage diving boat, why then would that result in them going and attacking a human being? I feed my dog every single night. My dog doesn't come out and bite me. You know, the, the link and analogy between saying that a shark will see a human being on a boat and then associate that human being with a surfer on a surfboard and go and attack it because it received a food reward miles and miles away is an incredibly big step in, in logic. If the sharks were able to think that far ahead, then I'd be scared to go into a tidal pool because the sharks would think, if I hopped over that wall, I could easily get the people inside the tidal pool. Whether you're for or against the cage dive industry, I think you have to keep your arguments fair. And what doesn't strike me as fair is that a lot of the same people that think these are mindless killing machines out there are the same people that then argue that these sharks are analyzing a situation where there's a piece of bait in the water and then a creature inside a cage over here and deciding that that is a food correlation to where when they see that creature that was in a cage, not in a cage later on, they're going to think food. That seems like a stretch, but even if it's not a stretch, you kind of have to choose one. Is it a mindless killing machine or is it a highly intelligent animal that's breaking down these situations? You know, then we have to start looking at every fishing boat that loses its catch to a shark, the shark is creating a link between the fisherman and the surfer. Every time a person goes and shoots a fish as a spear fisherman, there's an association created between a human and, a, and, a, and a, a food reward. It just makes no sense that the sharks would suddenly go and attack people, you know, because of this. And in our area at Seal Island, we only operate for seven months of a year. In the last 12 years, of the dozen or so attacks that have taken place in the rough area of False Bay and slightly outside of it, only two have taken place whilst the operators have actually been in season. So surely that says if the sharks were linking us with shark attacks, they would immediately leave our area and go and attack people. They wouldn't wait for months and months afterwards. You know, every single argument that gets put forward is flawed. And for people that have, have been open-minded enough to actually say, you know, we don't believe in cage diving because of this, that, and the next reason, and then have come out on the boat with us, have seen what we actually do out there, and some of the most vociferous campaigners against shark cage diving have actually become pro-shark cage diving because they A, see the environmental and educational value that guests are given when they're out there, and B, see the socio-economic value from a tourism and job employment uh, contribution side of things as well. So, you know, I think people who make those statements if any of them have been on a shark cage diving boat, um, I would be surprised. And certainly I doubt they've been out in false bay and seen the, the manner in which the operators conduct their businesses there.